All right, what's going on, guys? It's GSR here. So basically, I wanted to talk to you guys today about um, the Joker's Jack in the Box. Um, I'm not going to talk about everything in this video. Um, I'm just going to talk about his Jack in the Box, and then I'll make other videos talking about other things like this special move right here and why this move is very useful and stuff like that and what it complements. Um, so with that being said, let's get started. All right, guys. So when it comes to the Joker's Jack in the Box, he has pretty good options off of this. Um especially when he's pressuring you with this so the meterless version gives him a lot of plus frames to where he can enforce some type of pressure or if he's like away from you and stuff and you block that he can obviously start up shit like this and be plus on block and he can go for something different and you know you, you kind of get the idea here right now you don't want to be too predictable here with this move now keep in mind when you do uh see the opponent block this and they're standing up this allows your 4-2 to come out because if they challenge this sets up a crushing blow and obviously they're going to break out of it and stuff like that so you can kind of set up a jack in the box underneath them or you could just go for an uppercut and you kind of get the idea here right so the joker can obviously do shit like this now keep in mind you don't want to be super predictable with shit like that because when you're being very predictable with his um jack in the box it's very easy for the opponent to um get out of it now keep in mind um if the opponent doesn't know which normal or which special move they need to use to get out of this particular situation they're going to be put into a certain dilemma right so um if Brock was to do this look what happens he gets hit right let's see here see see what's happening here he's getting hit every single time right um see like every time i hit this nigga like i'm getting hit you see this um you go for a poke you're at risk of getting hit um, because you think you can press a button and you actually can't, um, you know what I mean? So you have to find the correct normal that can get you out of this particular situation. You see this? Um, so obviously for Baraka, that's an easy question blow. Um, if he was to do that, like he wouldn't be able to get a combo. So the best way for him to get out is like, he's, you know, obviously doing this shit right here. Um, or, you know, um, getting his crushing blow and then obviously setting up, you know, this. Right, so you kind of get the idea here, right? You kind of need to use like um, certain normals or certain combo strings or certain special moves that can push you out of that area from that bomb. You understand what I'm saying? That's where I'm getting at with that. Um, so when it comes to like uh, pressure shit with the Joker and stuff like that, um, he has quite a few options and I think the scarier option is when he goes for his low. And let me explain why that is. Alright guys, so another thing to keep in mind is is that when the Joker takes it upon himself to uh, go for this, you can get out of it if you know which uh, normal or special move to use, right? But the problem is is that there's no gap in this string at all. So the Joker uh, will be able to get his crushing blow on his overhead if he predicts that that's exactly what the hell you're trying to do, right? Also, he can do shit like this and knock you onto the ground, which start, starts up some type of oki for the joker because you're obviously more than likely going to use your defensive options or you're going to try and get up immediately which the joker will already be in your face to where he can grab you and do all this extra shit so if, the jo if barack was to get hit with this i'm already here you see this so you have to guess between a throw and a mid and if you get up pressing a button when i press a button like this you're going to get hit and then you're going to you know obviously get put into a combo so you, you kind of get the idea here right so when it comes to uh, pressure with his jack in the box he has quite a few mix-up options here to where he can cause a serious dilemma for the opponent if you know what you're doing with the joker right so when the joker does shit like this his low is the scariest because when you get hit with shit like that that's when a big damage happens right so he gets a solid uh 30 percent um not only that uh if the joker has access to his crushing blow well you're gonna take damn near 40 percent Right, so you're you're gonna take a lot of fucking damage off of his low option. His low option is really intimidating because even though you're standing up and you're blocking the plus frames, right? Because you're worried about his overhead and stuff like that with his back four two or his four two one, right? Even though I don't think going for his four two one mid screen is very useful, um, you're still gonna be concerned about that because it kind of comes out fairly quickly, right? So you standing up and this explodes. Um, and if he times this correctly, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. And not only that, it, it gets even worse because the thing is, is like, if you roll forwards, that's going to cause problems. If you go for your up three or up two, that's going to cause problems as well. And not only that, if the Joker really wants to be greedy, he can be greedy. He can, he can set shit up like this 
put you into a combo, um, you know, and then finish it off and do whatever the hell he's trying to do. You kind of get the idea here, right? And the thing is, is if you roll backwards or forwards, he can still take advantage of that particular situation with his setups, right? This is the reason why I think the Joker is the god of setups in this game, right? He can obviously do shit like that and chase you down. And then that, when you get knocked down on the ground, that sets up this, or he can do something totally different. So it, this causes massive amounts of issues for the opponent if they don't know what they're doing. You understand what I'm saying? So, I, you know, like, it, it's a lot of creative shit that, you know, the Joker can do to you, right? You see that? And then I can dash up and I'd be like, bro, where you going? And then I can finish off my combo with whatever I want or I don't have to waste another bar meter. And you kind of get the idea here. If you were to roll fours, I can pos I can more than likely hit you with my crushing blow. I can throw you. Um, and I can obviously toss this over there and then do this. And if I have access to a bar meter, you're obviously going to move around because you don't want me having my plus frames onto you or anything like that. So it's just a lot of creative stuff that he can do. And I think the Joker is the god of setups in this game because he can shut down a huge portion of your defensive options in this game. Right. So now I'm going to talk about other mix up options that this character has access to. So now, since you guys know what the dealio is with the fucking low situation, um, obviously the opponent's going to block low just like this. Right. So this causes massive problems for a number of reasons, because you still have to deal with the 50 50 situation here that he has access to. Um, not only that, he has it with uh, this string as well. Um, so you kind of get the idea here. He can kind of like really fuck you up if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but normally when I when you do get hit with the overhead option when he's mixing you up like that He's just gonna knock you far away because there's no reason to waste another bar meter and he can keep you away as much as possible right so the problem here with you blocking low is that he has a lot of blocks done on his 4-3 and his 2-1 right um, so I don't think going for his back 4-2 or his 4-2-1 mid screen is really a good idea when he's plus on block when he does something like this because he doesn't really get much off of it when he does shit like this he only gets 14 percent right so it's not really like it's nothing to be like oh damn wow that's awesome like no it's just it's it's not that good right even when he does this he doesn't really get any good amounts of damage even if he was to amplify it he doesn't really get any good amounts of damage <laughs> so i mean there's no reason to waste a bar meter for that shit so i think mid screen uh, going for a throw in a mid situation is better because if the opponent fucks around and they get hit um, with the plus frames, he can go for shit like this, right? And if he wants to amplify, he can do that because it's a solid 20% plus the hard knockdown. And he's a good distance away from majority of the up threes in the game and up twos in the game. If if Baraka was to try and challenge the Joker, right? And the Joker knew that he was going to go for his up three and stuff like that or his up two, that's an easy crush and blow. Right, and certain characters have better range, uh, obviously on their up twos and their up threes. So you kind of have to be careful uh, with that particular situation. See that, like Baraka is not reaching shit. So I can just stand right here and just wait for you to do something stupid. And if you don't know the correct range of your up two or up three, you're gonna get hit. And the Joker can take advantage of this particular situation every single time. Even if you were to take it upon yourself to roll forwards, that sets up what? His crushing blow uh, for his four two uh, his four two one two string, right? So let me let me show you guys what I mean by this, right? So I, I, you know you get your head bashed in solid twenty percent. This is the only time that I would use a bar meter, especially if you're trying to like charge up his crushing blow. That would make a lot of sense why you would do something like that. So if you put the plus frames on the opponent and they fuck around and you know they try to roll and stuff like that after you end up catching them with the mid situation because they thought you was going to throw them right you could do shit like this and if you have access to your crushing blow well say goodbye to all your health right see see what happens here um there's just a good amount of stuff that the joker could technically do right so you know he gets obviously um 18% here plus a little bit of extra damage right there. So 18 plus 18 is 36% damage. So he gets really good amounts of damage here. And that's pretty much what I would do mid screen. Now, when it comes to the corner, this is when he can just unleash everything that he has access to. You can go for a backboard too if you want. Um, it, it's really up to you, but I don't think it's, I, I don't see the point of doing it. Um, but when he goes for his forward to one, right? That's when he can do shit like this to you. And then he can obviously fuck you up, right? So, 
that's when his forward two one becomes useful, right? Now, when it comes to his back forward two, I mean, you can do it if you want because now the opponent has to deal with the 50-50s and stuff because they can't necessarily get out the corner that easily, right? Um, so when the opponent is standing up, um, there is a way to get the opponent to be stuck back into the corner, which is mad weird because like when I'm quiet, it, it works, right? So as you can clearly see here, like you'll get hit, right? Um, you'll literally get hit and this is what will happen to you, right? So what happens here is, is that, um, you're not going to like that because then his 4 2 one if he manages to hit you with just the second hit of his 4 2 one string, and he can easily pop you up into the air for a combo and then start up his game from there, right? Um, what else is there? If he hits you with the mids, that's even more damage. Um, and he can either cash out on damage or, you know, he can obviously, you know, do shit like this. Um, and if he didn't use his crushing blow, obviously he can do shit like this to you. And, you know, he can obviously just, you know, fuck your life up. You know what I mean? Um, and it can cause massive amounts of issues if the Joker gets that momentum going because it, it's it's not a good situation to be in against this character. You know what I mean? So like I said, like if he ends up hitting you with this shit right here, man, this is going to cause problems because you're obviously going to try and get out the corner because you're going to think he's trying to pressure you and that's not what he's trying to do. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're not making correct reads and you're going to end up taking a fucking fatal blow. <laughs> you're going to take massive amounts of damage in the corner. When he gets you in the corner, man, that's when the problems start. But don't get it twisted. Mid-screen, he can get these setups going and not a lot of characters have... Um, not a lot of characters have really good setups like that. And the Joker, I think, is the only character in the game that has really powerful setups. Now, Devora, she has pretty good setups in a way, like, to where she can protect herself and she'll be unbelievably plus on block. But her setups are not as strong as I thought they would be, right? Um, and like I said, he can get a lot of shit going here in the corner and cause massive amounts of issues, um, if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, right? And another thing to keep in mind is that um the joker can obviously set up you know another setup right now there is a way to keep the opponent stuck into the corner some people probably tried it out or something like that and was like damn he can't hold on let me see if i can show you guys this real quick because it is possible to keep the opponent stuck into the corner when you're doing setups and stuff see this now what i did here right is is that there is somewhat of a strict timing here but if you backdash really quickly and then input the grab button really quickly that's what's going to happen right um another another clear indication of this is uh you can go for his forward one but the timing on it is very strict um to a certain degree so it's kind of difficult to do um but if you time it correctly you can hit the opponent and then you know obviously do whatever the hell you're trying to do and stuff like that see this I went for my forward one. He got popped up into the air uh, because what you want to do here, like I said, is you want to back dash really quickly like this, and then you want to hold on. Damn it! I fucking hate the buffers in this game. Damn, I hate that shit. See, see that you want to quickly back dash like that, and you want to get the precise timing correctly, so that way when the opponent tries to roll out and you make the correct read, knowing for a fact that they're going to try and do that, what happens here is is that your back dash. Is going to stop them from getting out the corner because it's, it's kind of like the joker is kind of like a brick wall right so hold on let me, let me see if i can show you guys a clear example of this real quick right so the joker is like you know he's doing his thing and stuff like that right and then he does this shit like this right see this it's kind of like he's a brick wall when you backdash with the joker you need to make sure that you're immediately backdashing after the setup make sure you immediately backdash and if you time it correctly you can get a forward one just like i showed you guys and you can obviously dash right underneath the opponent and put them right back into this in the corner and then do another setup and it's just going to cause all these massive issues because even if the opponent was to get up with an up two or an up three they're still going to get hit with his uh his bomb well his jack in the box right so if i was the back dash right Say, for instance, I was the back dash, right? And I caught you with just the overhead option of his 4 2 1 string, right? And I'm like, okay, let's get it, right? And I hit you with this shit right here, and I'm hitting you with a setup, right? And I try to back dash, right? And I just fucked that up. Um, so let me do that again. And I try to back dash, right? You see what happens here? Like, like you will get hit with that bomb. So now it's gonna feel like you can't necessarily do anything. And you know what's ironic about this particular situation is that if you were to take it upon yourself to actually jump into the air, you just 
made yourself a huge fucking target. Um, you have no idea why you just did that. Like, like, you, you're like, because you're just gonna panic. And the reason why I say you have no I idea why you just did that, meaning like why you're jumping, is because you don't know what to actually do here in this situation. Because if the opponent is making constant reads and they know what you're doing, this is gonna cause massive amounts of issues. So if I was to hit Baraka like with, with a four-two-one and stuff like that, right? And I hit this nigga like this, and then I go directly into a setup. And I know he's gonna jump, right? He's gonna get hit. You see that? Like, even if he was to jump over me, bro, like, he's still at a huge risk because he could get hit with an anti air. And the same thing applies mid screen. You understand what I'm saying? So it, it causes all these fucking problems. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and I don't think people understand that. Um, so hopefully, this video was kind of helpful, I guess you could say. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.